Previously on Follow the Leader. Today, we're playing Arcane Academia by Thomas Herbertson, with art by Annie Johnston Click. For those of you who are new to the game, here are the basics. In Arcane Academia, you play a group of students at a magical academy, companions to the tumults and turmoil of a day in the life of wonder and whimsy. Bond over meals together, attend arcane lessons, socialize during your free time, and go on daring, mischievous escapades at night. The person that I have here... Um, this one is Soleil, pronouns he, him. Um, the way that I've described him is he's fully wound in thickly padded protective gear, like think uh, overalls or coveralls or some such, mended enough times to become a patchwork quilt at least a quarter of an inch thick. The stature suggests someone on the shorter end, about 5'2", um, who still has a very tall spine for their hidden frame. They don't slouch at all. Um, they have bright green eyes that glint out from above a face covering and below a train engineer's cap, with goggles perched atop the brim, with spiky tufts of straight black hair sprouting out from either sides of their cap and pale ears poking out. Um, finally, they've got thin, dexterous fingers protruding out from their fingerless utility gloves. So, more like industrial, like workhorse kind of person, as opposed to the, the fancier, less calloused types. So. I'm playing Aster, uh, pronouns are she, they. Look is sleepy eyes, covered almost completely by straight black bangs. Um, she has long straight black hair and dark clothes. She is previously my ghost girl, now coming back as a magic student. I'll be playing Soul Hawk, uh, because I think that uh, the idea of Soul as a magic student is pretty hilarious. Uh, she <laughs> uses she, her pronouns. She has uh, tan skin and close-cropped uh, bleach blonde hair, uh, brown eyes that are, you know, sharp uh, and a sullen demeanor, uh, kind of a little bit sulky, a little bit uh, confrontational. And I think, like, her clothes tend to be uh, more rough and tumble than other folks at the school. Like, she tends to wear... Uh, dark denim and nothing protective like Soleil, but still like clothes that you could get down and dirty in uh, without feeling too conscious of it. We now return to your game, already in progress. So we're back around, so let's figure out how lunch went. So I think both Sol and Soleil managed to earn a spur somewhere in the mix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, given that, we get to choose if we arrive first or last to lunch. I think Sol arrives last, or at least arrives late. Um, I think she got a very kind but also stern talking to yeah, that's fair. Like, a, you really should pay attention next time. Some of these things could be very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, like that sort of thing. I think the same thing happens for um, Soleil. Um, I think in this case, it's more just like, not even necessarily that they are in hard in trouble, but they just got caught up talking to the instructor about like how they could do things a bit more effectively next time. Mm -hmm. um because it's clear that they weren't really going about things in a rigorous manner or some other things about that so they really could try to do this and that and the other and they're getting advice and they just kind of get left or held behind for a bit because of that mm -hmm. so that means that uh aster gets to arrive first hmm. of the group and so that means that uh, anya you get to choose first from that list of options yes um 
I'll give my opinion on the quality of the meal being served. How's lunch today? What's on the menu? Um, that sandwich below is great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the worst part is that I, Anya, would try that sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's got like... A tentacle and a leg, like a like a bird leg poking out of it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I would try it. <laughs> um, I commend your bravery. Um, I think Ast- Aster is also a garbage disposal. Uh, God. And uh, I think, honestly, yeah, the weirder the food, the more she's like, oh shit, this sounds great. Like. I don't know. What's a magical creature you can boil? Um, (laughs) (laughs) Already a great way to start that question. (laughs) But yeah, she's all about it. Um, I don't know if it's everyone's. But I also like to think that this is a fancy ass school, so they probably have lots of options. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, I think we did say like way early on that this is one of those situations where like, the school is so huge that it probably sustains the town it's attached to. So yeah, I could easily see, like, even if the breakfast and stuff is more like continental, like things that are easy to prepare in batches, the lunches are probably more like extravagant. And um, Oh, is it like, so my college had this where it's a restaurant for the students, but people from off campus can also come and pay to eat there. Ooh, that'd be cool. I like yeah, that. I like that a lot. I think that's uh, super neat. I had that same situation in my college, too. So, Yeah, so they, like, it's food that should be good enough that people would want to come and spend money on it. Not just the kids who are forced to. Yeah, like, it's not, like, five-star. But it's, right. like, two-star, at least. Hmm. Maybe my standards are a little low. <laughs> hmm. But, yeah. So, when y'all eventually get there, you find Astrid just uh, munching away. Okay, okay. She looks up, like, how are the troublemakers? What's up? <laughs> yeah, between the two of us, uh, August, who do you want to have arrive first? Since we both kind of got held back. Uh, I guess, if it's okay with you, Sol arrives before Soleil. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. But, uh, it's a little later, I think, what Sol wanted uh, on the, the lunch menu is sold out. Or not sold out. I don't think I don't think students pay for their food. Mm. But uh, you know, there's no more of what she was looking forward to. So uh she gets I think she gets a meal that's largely protein. Uh I don't see her as much of a vegetable eater. Um God. and yeah. sits down next to Aster and just digs in without saying anything okay yeah i think (laughs) with soleil like he he pops in and like the bag that he's got behind them like you know when you'd be in like high school and you'd try to like pack everything in your bag and never use your locker does anyone know some Mm -hmm. of that oh yeah that's the situation that he's kind of ended up with but not not because he is not willing to but more just he got like books put on him by the instructor he was speaking to and it was like a full stack and he had to like kind of fit it in somewhere so like his uh like clockwork companion is actually on the back of the bag just trying to hold the latch together for long enough for him to like set it down by the table and then he runs off and essentially picks up whatever's left like he gets like the the overcooked like burger or you know the stuff that's been sitting for a while and you can tell like it's definitely they're about to transition over like to the next batch or what have you or it's the end and they're just kind of putting out what they have left so what's what option would you like to do august oh man part of me wants to learn the truth behind a rumor or at least like learn something new about a rumor um i think Maybe through the the meandering talking to. Oh, kitty! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> um, through the meandering talking to that Sol got, she learned that um, Instructor Crowhaven has actually seen that room. Oh, like it was a long time ago, but we have concrete evidence that the room exists. 
it's actually there. That's spicy. Yeah. So I want to modify that rumor. I'm going to modify the instructor in, in key. How old are you, Instructor Crowhaven? We never ask. That's not a good thing to ask people. Yeah. <laughs> but you can wonder secretly. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think for Soleil, I'm going to pull a couple references and choose one to interact with. So, between the locations, the instructors, and the peers, I'm going to roll some Ds. Okay. That brings me to the peers. Three, four, five. Got five of them to interact with. One. That brings Oakley over to us. Nice. So, I think with Oakley, Soleil probably caught them on the way to grab food. I think they were also probably a bit late to the room, but for somewhat different reasons. Like, I think they have a habit of exploring around, and part of their stuff is also just getting familiar with the landscape. So, um, like, he pulls Oakley over to the table and goes like, Hey, uh, we, have, we have room at the table for Oakley? Soul shrugs. <laughs> Aster will scoot over. Cool. Yeah. Um, Soleil plants Oakley in the spot and just, like, helps them set their stuff down and then pops over to the other side of the table and makes himself comfortable um, along with that. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, if we're looking for someone who knows and sees things, I mean, Oakley's not a bad option for that. Does uh, anyone want to take on the role of Oakley? I'm just imagining, like, Oakley looking wide-eyed and there's uh, someone in the background being like, yeah, Oakley's seen some shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like, wanted to ask, we've been talking about this vault thing for such a long time. Well, I say such a long time, only since morning, but still. Uh, and, you know, kind of wanted to see if maybe, like, you'd seen anything, heard anything, spotted anyone talking about anything. Maybe you saw it yourself. I don't know. How about you? What, what are you thinking? I think Oakley, I do think Oakley is wide-eyed. And they kind of shake their head a little bit. And are like, I promise not to say anything. What? To who? Who'd you promise to? They look a little uncomfortable and like kind of fold in on themselves a little bit. And they're like, I promise not to say anything about that either. Well, they can't have caught everything in the promise, could they? Oakley just says, they're really vicious, okay? That's all I can say. Huh? person i promised to it they're they're vicious okay i sort of like look to the other two to see like if they if they've caught the vibe because i definitely haven't uh hmm like um for the audience uh i've rolled a four uh on the the list of instructors and number four was aloysius the vicious wormwood <laughs> So, little little peek behind the curtain there, but I don't know. I don't know if Soul picks up on that. Maybe it makes most sense for Aster to pick up on it because they were in that class. Yeah. Mm hmm. I think Soleil tried taking that class, but kind of bounced out after. <laughs> Like, it's hard for them to say, or it's hard for him to say, like, mean things. But also, when people try to say mean things about him, he's just kind of like, huh? That's mm -hmm. a lie. And it just kind of settles there. What does uh what does Astros think about this one? Um Yeah, so Astro might catch on a little, um, and maybe like since Oakley isn't seeming very interested in like giving us too much, she might like offer a bribe. <laughs> <laughs> like off your lunch plate? Or like um so the professor that Aster actually kind of likes, is Oakley the kind that's, like, too cool to pay attention? I think Oakley's paying attention at all times. <laughs> <laughs> I think they pay too much attention. Yeah, Oakley's uh, advantage or aptitude, sorry, I knew it started with an A. Oakley's aptitude is being perceptive, so 
they're yeah. definitely paying attention at all times. Oh, wow. I misremembered who Oakley is. Oh, no, that's fair. This whole time, I thought Oakley was the uh, the popular person we were supposed to be getting the attention of. No, that's Chansey. God damn it. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, well then, <laughs> never mind everything I just said. <laughs> um, I don't think there's no reason a bribe couldn't work, though. Yeah. Well, Let's see. Practical. Where's hand-me-downs? What kind of a bribe would you like, Oakley? Clumsy. Anyone know a spell to help with clumsiness that you can teach, Oakley? An anti-trip spell? Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know that, but Yeah, probably. the very one. Like, <laughs> like a reaction spell to maybe not get hurt when you hit the ground. I feel like... I'm, I'm gonna venture a statement here. I feel like Aster in... Their eternal preparedness for death probably has spells ready for, like, weird situations, you know? That is fair. So maybe Aster will offer to teach Oakley, like, a, a spell of protection of some kind to help with the constant uh, injuries. <laughs> okay. Does that open Oakley up at all? I think Oakley... I don't know, is it more interesting if Oakley opens up about it, or is it more interesting if if uh, they double down because, like, it's a magical compulsion? Oh. And someone just happens to notice that? Mm-hmm. Let's go with the compulsion angle, I think. They, they, could li- they literally can't say. Yeah. And it's like a... A stilled tongue kind of thing, almost. Like, their jaw just shuts. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think they bite their tongue. Oh, buddy. (laughs) The vicious. I'm gonna go ahead and amend them for a bit here. I think given the tongue biting, Soleil will probably uh, (laughs) hurry Oakley off to uh, somewhere to get that taken care of. Because it probably hurts quite a lot. Speaking from direct experience. Okay. With that, that's the end of lunch, and we can move on to free time. So, after eating, each companion should select which five following free time activities their companion will engage in during the next phase. They can also invite other companions to the scene as appropriate. So, the five options that are presented for free time are library study, discipline, solitary reflection, heart-to-heart, and a clash of wills. I think we each get one based off of reading. So has anyone got any strong preferences? I kind of want to do a clash of wills, um, but ask somebody to play Chansey. Okay, okay. Uh, I think... Yeah, I think I'll probably end up doing Discipline. Just to take care, like, so Soleil can load off some of the work that they received as extra recommendations from their... uh, Herbal lore instructor. That works, because I was looking at solitary reflection. Nice. Okay. So, looking at the three of these, I think it'd probably be good to do the solitary reflection first, then follow that with our clash of wills, and then discipline, it means that I have to go do a chore, I think. (laughs) For (laughs) ten minutes. Yeah. So that means that Aster and uh, Soul can hang out and figure things out. Yeah. So solitary reflection. One player whose companion plays a solitary reflector. Other players may be featured as the room, the birds, the sky, the wind, and local critters. Any who do not wish to play may rescue, re- may recuse themselves for the duration of the meditation. The solitary reflector states the things that trouble them. Each other player may respond with one sentence as one of the other roles they have access to. I think the reason Aster has come here to solitarily reflect. Oh, it doesn't have to be meditation is what what I'm reading. Is that correct? Yeah, it can be something else too. It says fishing, knitting, whittling, painting, anything that requires a degree of focus or solitude. Okay. I think Aster's um, hobby is probably drawing. Nice. And I think (laughs) it's about to get not nice. I think she draws the deaths that she sees. (laughs) 
Oh boy. Okay. Um, as a way, it's probably a lot of a way to keep track of it for her. So it's like she gets a chance to go away and it's like, here's what I dreamt last night. Um, so that way I can get it down and then, um, hopefully prevent it from happening today, I guess. Kind of externalize it, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's what's troubling Aster. Um, I think as the room, uh, the room is pleasantly warm and comforting and like the, the vibes of the room are definitely at odds with the vibes of the drawing. Hmm. Yeah. Um, for the sky, I'd say this is starting to reach more of the golden hour since, you know, it's winter evening comes earlier. Um, the rays of the sun sort of poke slowly through the window and paint its own picture on the canvas of bricks below. Is it magical painting to show me that everything will be all right? Or yeah. is it just light? It's it's as magical as you want it to be, I think. It's one of those things where, like, think of, like, oracles, right? Of, like, reading tea leaves or of reading mm. bones that you've tossed. The sun, the way that its, light, that its rays play over the patterns of the stone on the ground. You can read meaning in them. You can't, you can make, not read meaning to them. There are shadows that are being cast that may have some form of um, semantic component to it. So, I think in this case... The the shadows that are being cast in this particular golden hour, and I'll take this as that one sentence now that I've explained the premise, um, what you see is this. The tendrils crawl up along the wall of the ceiling, but they only follow the paths between the bricks. I think Astrid adds to her drawing the information as it, as the room in the sky make it available. Um, to incorporate those elements more permanently, permanently. Gotcha. Which I think might, in this case, it's sounding more reassuring. Am I reading that correctly? I think that's not an incorrect way to read it. Yeah. Um, I think, I think this happens when she draws, but it's not always like a encouraging one. So this time she incorporates that warmth and the guidance into the drawing to make kind of change the tone of it. Mm. Okay. I see there's another yeah. component here. Uh, it's interesting. It has like a, a meditation. Yep, there's a meditation timer. So we can, as we choose... So the order that it goes is the solitary reflector states the things that trouble them and each other player can respond to one sentence or one of the rules uh, that they have access to. You choose a length of time to attend to the task. Um, in game terms, you represent it by meditating for about that long. Another player reads a passage and then sets or starts a meditation timer. And then other players can join in on the meditation as they desire. Otherwise, they would respect the space and make gentle, non-intrusive sound effects as the other role is available to you. They're also welcome to wander away from this play, space of play at the time to attend to other needs if needed. So well, I'll read the passage out just so yeah. we have it on hand and in audio. But here's what... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, here's what the book presents. Sit. Still your movements. Take deep breaths. Rest yourself comfortably, but hold your body present. Try to let thoughts slip away. It is okay to find yourself dwelling on things. Once you recognize that you are dwelling upon any particular thought, gently push it away. When you find yourself on a new train of thought, acknowledge the presence of that thought too before letting it pass. Seek to cultivate a timeless emptiness devoid of thought. I won't maintain the moment of silence too long. <laughs> yeah. Fun, good, good exercise in general. Maybe not the best for podcasting, but yeah, yeah. I think just reading the the meditation is good. Yeah, but I think that's a neat activity. Um, yeah. The way that the resources work for this one is, you can earn a perk if you surrender a spur, letting go of the ways it shames and drives you. And if you don't have one, 
You can earn a perk if during the meditation you accomplish a true state of, and I'm quoting this from the book, no thoughts, head empty. Um, <laughs> you can earn a spur if your meditation is interrupted from outside the game, you're forced to respond to something else, and when you come back, you choose not to reset the timer to restart the meditation. And finally, you can create a reference if you couldn't stop thinking about something at the school the whole time you were meditating. I think. I think we can. What makes pick freely on this one, if if wanted at all? Yeah, because justifying it, um, I like earning a spur because we're so cognizant of this being a podcast and being radio that like silence isn't great, so we're trying to like. Fill find ways to like yeah, yeah. so i kind of like incorporating that into the character yeah i think it's a conceit i will learn his part and also i think that reflects Esther's mental state with this constantly yeah <laughs> okay we'll take the spur and move forward then so that brings us to a clash of wills so for the selecting player as their companion this in this case it would be august for soul Additionally, they should choose one peer for another player to play, or a fellow companion whose player consents to the scene. The other player gets to choose whether they want to enact the first feat. So, there's a question that has to be answered first, which is, which of you provoked the other one first here? And what have each of you put on the line in this contest of pride? So, I think August, you get to define who is what, and then we go from there. Yeah, so this is, I think, Soul provoked chancy okay because she's just like i'm i'm getting my item back i'm That's getting right. my my sentimental MacGuffin back yeah anya do you want to take a shot at being chancy yeah what vibe are we feeling just so i can make sure i represent her correctly yeah who's who who did who first and is it like a in the hallway situation? Is it in the lunchroom? Is it in the courtyard somewhere? Like, where does what's Soul's choice of arena? Hmm. I because I like the courtyard. I like the idea that Soul like corners Chancy in the courtyard. Just like, hey, I don't know if I if I want the tone to be like, hey, bitch, but. Something like that, but just ratcheted down a little bit. Mm. Well, and it could be that Chansey, like, feels, reads more into it because soul can be dry. And so Chansey is just, like, reading more anger than is there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like, here's a question that I'll put in there. Um, Chansey is reading as someone who's got, like, a posse behind her. Um mm. Yeah. Does she have that posse with her for this? I think it's more fun if she does. Yeah, and you said you, you like, came up, so she's probably with them. Like, it's not just, like, she calls them in as backup, they're, like, her friends, so they were probably already together. Okay, nice. Take this as a vibe, then. I think when you're in the courtyard, and I think when Soul goes and confronts Chansey, um, almost as if responding to that sudden sort of ring being drawn... Um, a circle of heath will rise up around everyone. Ooh. So, with that stated, um, the last thing we should define is, what have each of you put on the line in this contest of pride? It's the MacGuffin, right? Like, mm -hmm. like if if Sol wins, she gets Meryl's item back. If, uh, if Chansey wins, like, we may never see that item again. There we have them. The stakes are set. So, the way this works is, uh, the section here is quip pro quo. So we take turns quipping and responding to feats from the list to the right. There's a table of escalating feats that's here um, that has various sort of stages that we can go through. Your feat can only escalate the situation from prior feats. You may not pick a prompt from any demand to lower than the conversation has already reached. So it's a bit of a ladder. At any point, rather than issuing a higher level feat than has already been enacted, you may yield the field, conceding the issue to your opponent. Once either of you have completed a level 5 or higher feat, during any feat, any player may declare that character attempting the feat fails to complete the task or that a teacher breaks up the exchange. End the minigame when interrupted this way. Any player may spend a spur to negate their companion being so interrupted during this minigame. Uh, the final thing it notes is if you reach feats 9 or 10, which there are 10 total, 
then we can consider choosing the Rival Confrontation minigame when selecting your group's post-dinner escapade. So the feats here list are range from anything from the first one being issuing a condescending comparison as a dismissal to the final feat on the list being to leap to violence needing to be dragged away by others present. All right. Who is the first? I think since Sol's the one provoking, that means that August gets to go first. Okay. Yeah, so the first feat is issue a condescending comparison as a dismissal. Um, I think just to kind of like abstract this a little bit, uh, because I'm not great at thinking of insults on my feet. Um, I think this is a comparison calling Chansey a coward and a thief. Okay. Um, I'll only escalate it one, um, to boast about prior accomplishments, which render this a non-issue. So Chansey is um, probably going to gesture to, like, her posse and her status generally and is like, Now, dear, I am... I've got everything I could ever want. What what would I need to be a thief for? I... And certainly no coward. Alluding to... um, Maybe she even says, like, she has more power than you in this situation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to escalate and invoke an omen regarding the stakes over which we disagree. And I'm going to, through gritted teeth, say, that thing is practically all I have of my sister. And if you keep it, you're just calling a curse down on your head for keeping a dead girl's memento. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Remember at any point, you can't concede. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I want to end the scene so soon, but I I want Chancey to concede. Um, I can keep going. (laughs) By all means. um, Yeah, Chancey will play dumb. Uh, and swear an oath upon an ancestor's memory, just like, well, I swear upon my great-grandfather's deceased dog that (laughs) I have no knowledge of the item you speak coming at me with such rude manners. Soul growls, my sister's memory is so much bigger than your great-grandfather's dog. I dare you, empty your bag. Hmm. Prove you ain't got this. Start rolling dice in the background. (laughs) Is it more interesting if it's in her bag or if it's not in her bag? (laughs) I think if you concede it's in her bag, if you don't concede it's not in her bag. Right. Because then I would be proving a point by displaying my power and, well, my powers would, I think that's referring to magic, but I also can interpret that as, like, my powers that, here, I empty my bag, I don't have it. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I want her to concede, though! I want you to get this back! (laughs) Ah. How far does Sol want to go? You want to go one more round? Sure, I'm fine with that. Okay. So yeah, uh, Chansey doesn't spill her bag out on the table. She, she one by one, like, places everything delicately, like, ugh, my Gucci pin will get scratched if I just pour it out on the table. Uh, and then shows you the inside of her bag to prove it's empty. And then her posse will, like, giggle behind her. I've decided Chansey's a bitch now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. So the next uh, escalation is request to be issued to dare to prove your commitment. And I'm trying to think of how to word this. You can also escalate it more than one. Yeah, you can go further than that. I'm rolling dice in the background <laughs> to see if, <laughs> if a teacher shows up, by the by. <laughs> you could do anything from a seven to a ten. 
Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Goodbye, Chansey's pretty face. Slam the gas. Yeah, so I'm going to go straight to number 10. Leap to violence, needing to be dragged away by the other's presence. And I think Sol's going to lunge for the bag and, like, shove Chansey to the ground uh, while she, like, tries to tear the bag apart to see if it there's, like, a secret compartment that the item might have been tucked away in. Nice. And if Chansey gets up, uh, Sol will... Uh, shove her again and if if the posse tries to close in uh she's gonna fight it yeah i'm sure it is like they close ranks around too yeah i like the idea that soul gets what she wants but chancy like she also has to back down but soul looks like a jerk is that okay yeah absolutely okay so my thought is that when you push chancy she sprains her ankle Mm -hmm. uh she can't fight back and her posse um helps her to the nurse's office and as she is being taken away you find the hidden pocket i've i've decided that this might be a worry stone actually not like a pencil a pencil set or something uh i'm decide i've decided a, a worry stone might work uh well you sure do need it now <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're gonna worry so yeah, you you injured her. Uh, so you got what you want, but like now it just looks like you were mean to a defenseless girl. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> behind the curtain too, as they were going up the table of feats, I was essentially <laughs> reducing the DC for a die I was rolling against to see if a teacher would show up. None of this happened. So whoops. Okay. Well. I think it's time for perk spurs and references then. Yep. You get a perk if you issued a challenge that your opponent could not beat. Uh, a spur if you got in trouble for a, from a teacher for horseplay and fighting. And a reference if you drew out a response from your opponent that you didn't expect. Thoughts? I think because I pressed the gas and uh, Chansey couldn't fight back, I think I got a perk. I think that yeah. makes sense. Immediate escalation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that moves us back to discipline. <laughs> so, for discipline, for one companion who must do a chore or punishment duty, allowing everyone else the chance to hang out. Consider doing this mini game if you played hooky from a class earlier as your responsibilities catch up to you. Uh, players who selected this free time activity... Go and do a chore you've been putting off. Something like that homework in your backpack, that website you've been meaning to sign up for, or that relative you've meant to send a note. In your, if in your own living space, many more chore options appear. Those dishes you meant to wash, that laundry you meant to fold, etc. Set a timer for 10 minutes when you finish the chore or the timer rings, whichever occurs, or sorry, return when you finish the chore or when the timer rings, whichever occurs first. Other players, hang out in character as your companions and make idle conversation. There are six conversational prompts you can choose from, including the weather, a familiar behavior, a prior class, <laughs> you can pick up on a rumor, nurse a spur, or flaunty perk. When the chore goer returns, they must relate an anecdote about what sort of disciplinary duties they undertook. How y'all feel about chatting for five minutes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll set a timer. Yeah, I think, uh, let me know when the timer starts. Okay. Because I know how this starts. Let me set the timer up. I've got I've got my watch right here. And now. Alright, I'll mute myself. Um I think Soul like comes back to where would Soul meet Aster at this point? Since this is free time, would this be like in the dorms? So what if um this these two last events were happening at the same time, and so Aster maybe has a dorm that overlooks the courtyard and saw this happening out her window. Okay, I like that idea. So Aster comes down uh, to meet Saul. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Aster will come out um, and just like, well, uh, well, this could be a familiar behavior. <laughs> um, like, 
Well, Soul, uh, maybe you should just join the wrestling team at this point. Soul, like, is looking very pleased with herself, a uh, hand in her pocket, like, you know, I don't know if Aster can tell that she's, like, got the worry stone in her hand and is, like, running her thumb over it, but, um... Saul looks very pleased with herself and says, Nah, I want to give people a fair chance. Uh, and Aster will do one of her creepy wide smiles um, <laughs> and gesture to your hand in your pocket. Like, what you got there? Uh, Saul brings the stone out of her pocket and does a thing like a flourish with with her hand. And says, I got it. Um, Aster will give a little clap. And is like, and I'll never borrow it again. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hate to end our friendship. <laughs> so having established what that was for, I guess um, Aster would turn to the class that we had together. Just like, uh, so what'd you think of uh, today's? story <laughs> i really don't see how that is uh relevant to the dilemma what do you mean where was that story even going i mean it's like if the thing with all the importance isn't important if you take that importance from it was it ever important to begin with, man? <laughs> all that metaphysical stuff is horseshit. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, that seems about right for you. And Aster will sit up on the table. Um, I think... Let's see, I already flaunted a perk. Um, let's pick up on a rumor. So, what do you think about Oakley. Certainly got more going on than you'd think. At glance. I don't know. I think uh I think they got a lot going on. Talking about the vicious. I mean class always seems normal. If anything, I I mean he does want us to go or they it's vicious as they, right? They do want us to, like, you know, go a little bit harder. We, Xander and I signed up for this just because it seemed like our kind of thing, but it's like they want us to be mean sometimes. Okay, timer's up. Welcome back. <laughs> Five minutes done. I did actually try to do something with that. Nice. Okay, so now... I get to relate an anecdote. <laughs> okay. And I'm legitimately unaware of all the conversations that happened before, which is extra fun. Um, yeah, Soleil drops back in after a while of just getting out and about and trying to take care of um, his business. And he pops in and is like, yeah, hey, everyone. Uh, sorry I missed on this. I had to help with, um, I had to help Mr. Heathrow with his hand again. I mean, he can reach most of it on his own. But, like, it's some of the smaller work that he needs a little help with. You know? Recalibrating the knuckles, like, making sure um, it's oiled up properly. All the other kind of fiddly stuff that he can't quite do as well with one hand. Uh, what I miss? Well, while you were busy being teacher's pet, uh, huh. Saul pulls out the worry stone with a grin. Oh, look at you. Yeah, no one was hurt in the process, right, Sol? No one important. Huh. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, um, I get to earn a perk if I did an extra chore, which I didn't. Uh, I get to earn a spur if I did got sidetracked and didn't even start it, which I did. I did start it. I didn't get a really cool idea either, so it's kind of a bolo for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I had to run back and forth, click and back, so... But I did start on something, so that's important, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
now that, did, that we did free time, and I guess now that uh, <laughs> if I'm guessing, Sol and um, Aster got to talk about the stuff that happened with Chansey in Oblique. Yeah, and we started uh, talking about Oakley when you got back. Nice. Yeah, that brings us to dinner. So, here's the question that gets asked at the start, and I'm sure I know what the answer is, but do players wish to persist for the night or retire? If the general consensus is to retire, proceed to the bedtime phase of play. If not, take a brief break to attend to your mental well-being and your physical needs. I think we're all doing fine, but how do y'all feel? I kind of think because we only have half an hour left in our recording session, um, I think that maybe proceeding to bedtime might be best. Okay. Just to be mindful of the time. Alrighty, then I'll read some of what's coming through, just so folks can understand. Normally, well, I can't say normally, if you do choose to proceed um, for the dinner, you get some things that you can do as part of the uh, group meal, and everyone gets a choice from a list of actions. After dinner occurs, you get a list of escapades, so it's like free time, but you get to get up to shenanigans after the fact, like exam ordeals or holiday festival or arrival confrontation, etc., etc., and there's a bunch of mini games based off of that one that you can do. But what we are here is we're going to skip those ahead since we're running close on time and go for the heading to bed section. So what heading to bed is, is we get to say our goodbyes, highlight, ward, do some self-reflection, change aptitudes, change vulnerabilities, etc., etc. So let's go through these in order. So... Let's start with saying our goodbyes. As you depart for the night, give each other some praise for what you've accomplished today and talk around what you don't want to see more of going forward. Everyone should highlight one thing and may optionally also ward against something else. Add new wards to the warding charter reference. So highlights here is just take a chance to, or take a moment to shout out something cool that someone did during the session. We can voice appreciation for each other, or share what we'll take away from the game as we look back and compliment and praise. Anyone have any thoughts up front? Um, I do think the the rumor about the vault was really cool. Um, yeah. We might have to come back to this someday so we can uh, do a little bit more with that. I think it's very fun. Yeah, that's, that's just... That's what like... I was gonna say. Yay! Yeah. We'll take it. Like, I like... I like the idea of utilizing Aster's um, hobby as well to, like, it closes on her, like, drawing a picture of maybe, like, a vision she's had of the vaults, like, the entrance to them. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to point towards, too. Like, I really like that aspect of Aster, like, cataloging dreams. It's personal mm-hmm. bias, I do a bit of dream diarying, but... Seeing that laid out in like visual form is a really strong um, image, I think, and also yeah. using that to like incorporate like the traits of the room in which uh, they're doing it in as a sort of oracle almost. Like that's neat. I like that a lot. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, and I think too. Big fan. Yeah, I think too. With that, I'm also glad for Soul's willingness to just <laughs> immediately punch the gas and just go to punch him. I know, it's like, uh, but babe, you don't have to go up just one at a time. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You, you could just punch her. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you're yeah. just like, yeah. <laughs> the, my my favorite magical incantation, fuck it, weeball. Yeah, <laughs> good shit. Thank <laughs> you for encouraging me. I'm glad that you took it. Okay. Hell yeah. So after... We can all do her soul stuff. Yeah. Um... <laughs> After highlights, we do wards, which is if we were made uncomfortable in any ways or that we could see something cropping up as a part of the stuff that we did, uh, we can take that and mark it as out of bounds. So much like with Lines and Veils, the game offers a warding charter um, as a reference card up front for things that generally kind of want to stay away from. So I do enjoy that that is an explicit part of like setting boundaries and things. Since we already had it um, kind of set out at the beginning, um, I think... We have our general stuff, but if we tackle this again, then it could be something that we could examine going forward to make sure that when we're set and going through a story, um, we can like prepare for that the next time we do something like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it starts out from, in the wards itself, it starts out from companion death. So it's uh, the game itself states that you probably shouldn't approach that, uh, directly at least. But um, 
if we find other things too that we'd like to avoid, and this would be the spot to do that normally. Um, after warning, there comes self-reflection, where we can ponder some personal developments and growth. Um, with that, we can choose whether or not we want to change aptitudes or change vulnerabilities. So if we got a perk, we can change our aptitude to something that more accurately represents us. So that means selecting or inventing a new trait and then sharing what about that aspect of uh, yourself you're particularly proud of. And then same things for vulnerability. If you got a spur, you can change your vulnerability to reflect new uncertainties in your self-conception. So we can select or invent a new trait and its attribute and then share what you doubt or fear about yourself in that context. So for instance, for Soleil, I think given everything that's happened so far, at least at the start, um, I'm probably going to move from something like naive to something a bit more like scatterbrained. Um, they've got a lot on their mind, or he's got a lot on his mind right now. So mm-hmm. he's trying to figure out how we can address these things that he's not sure about. Um, and he's kind of gotten deep in himself. He's not sure how to, to, to go on from there. Anyone have any thoughts about what they want to change? Yeah, I'm looking at stuff. I think I do want to change something. I'm just not sure yet. I think I want to spend my spur to change my vulnerability um, because arrogant doesn't quite fit anymore. I think it's going to be vengeful. Mm. Uh, let me see. Oh. Um, yeah, so I think vengeful is absolutely her new vulnerability. I think that um, I think that the attribute still stays as esoterica, but, um, like, just her single-minded focus on this kind of thing, like, clouds her better judgment. Mm. So. I think Aster stays eccentric. <laughs> There's no change in that. Um. But I think instead of disorganized, I think she is now anxious. Oh, no. (laughs) I think maybe this is the first time, like, um, a rumor has come to her in a dream like this. Mm, I feel that. It's like, oh, shit, it's developing. I'll nix this spur that I've got. Okay, so everyone gets to spend a spur. Yay! Woo. I like how we've all redefined what we're vulnerable about, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now that we've gone through that, we can do some questions unanswered, so we can consider what pertinent questions remain to investigate on later adventures, or sow the seeds for future character developments. If we're playing this for multiple sessions, then this would be a way to flag things we're interested in exploring next time. I think we've gotten some some potential things we can look at, so... What exactly is the nature of the vault? What exactly it is it that the vicious is hiding here? And what fallout will come as a result of what happens to Chansey? Yep. And I'll list that here. So we can keep that on in case we choose to do this again. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. There's also diary entries. So any player can write down a rumor about the events of the day or the questions raised during it. We can store this rumor with a reference deck and bring it out to reintroduce during another school's play session or school day's play session. If you wish, you can also take that time between sessions to write out the diary entry. Uh, we can recap the day and raise questions about surroundings. So, if anyone wants to pile that on, we could do that, or we can just put down a few rumors that we want to play with. I'm not. Sh- I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say that I think Aster's diary is all pictures, and so she's already done that step kind of nice yeah i think for soleil it's the constant like their their diary is full of notes and how to improve their uh their little guy their little clockwork creature but in the margins they voice like emotions or thoughts every so often or so he's got like a note on like the very bottom of a pretty dense uh scratched out blueprint where he's like how to get down below? Question mark. Mm-hmm. How about for Soul? I don't think that there's any new rumors or anything that happens with uh, Soul's diary entry. I think her diary entry is just very uh, 
self-satisfied about the events of the day. I don't think there's anything new introduced from the diary entry. I really showed Chancy one. Yep. <laughs> Nodding my head. That's a mood. Okay. Yeah. The last thing that we could do is, well, the second to last thing is mail correspondence. So we can write down a rumor about our own characters as we receive mail from home or a relative that sheds new light on the backstory or implicates them in something else going on. We also can store these with a reference deck. Um, and if we can't do them right now, we could do it between sessions to write the letter out from the author's perspective and highlight ways the information might affect or impact a companion. So I think that there's going to be a rumor about Sol, because uh, Sol received a letter that is from her hometown. It's not good. It it's it's like a threat. Mm. Um, and you know everybody knows Sol doesn't have a family from her hometown. So, uh, but Sol just like crumples the letter and throws it away, and somebody else finds it on the floor. So Sol's receiving uh, threatening letters from home. Always great. <laughs> Never bad. Never. Not once. Okay. Uh, I think Soleil got some choice literature <laughs> from, uh, from Mr. Heathrow. Kind of set it aside because he's a little too distracted to read into it now. But I think it relates to the sort of weird conspiracy that Walter Heathrow has subscribed to. Ooh. Ooh. Idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hit us. What if Aster reads in, like, the newspaper about someone dying the way she died in her dream? Ooh. Ooh. Was it really about you after all? That's, yeah, that's the implications. Maybe she's been seeing one death a day of whoever's going to die of, that day. Other people. Nice. Um, spicy. Very fun. Okay. Finally, cozying down. Describe yourselves bedding down for the night. Share a final snapshot of this place as we pull away and withdraw ourselves from play. I think, yeah. I think for Soleil, um, he's kind of got this pile of books that he's working through now. He did a little of it back during sort of free time, but now he's really deep in the weeds with it. Like he's got his desk set up. He's not really quite at bed. Um, he's actually a little ways down in the workshop, but it's one of those situations where like he's sitting at the drafting desk, like working through the information that he's been given, trying to draw it out as something a little more done through and the candle beside him that he's doing this by starts burning low. Um, I think as he gets further and further into it, he eventually ends up leaning his, his face and arm on the drawing desk or the drafting desk and kind of without realizing it drifts off to sleep. I think Sol like has a pajama set that has pockets. So she's got the worry stone in one pocket and the way that she falls asleep is with her hand on the worry stone uh, and her head pillowed on her other arm. Um, and it's probably the best that she's slept in a while. Um, she dreams of happier times with her family and she dreams of the time that she nicked the stone from Meryl. Okay, and then Aster. Um, I think Aster is seen in her bed, completely under the covers, like head and all. Because I assume we have roommates, trying not to disturb her roommate too much. She's got headphones in, and she's just glued to her phone, googling deaths. And like, googling very specifically things she's found, and like, trying to stay awake as much as possible because she doesn't want to know what, what the next one is. Damn. Nice. <laughs> Cozy! <laughs> you ever literally doom scroll so hard? Yeah. <laughs> so, I think as we drift away from our students and as we 
slowly float away from the castle itself. You can see a sort of wide expanse as it grows along. The night sky itself, while it doesn't show the signs of all of the effects in the winds of winter just yet, uh, we can see the clouds start to gather overhead. The forecast, it's looking a little grim. Um, snow is coming soon, but there's still just a little bit of cheer left for the rest of the year until we get into the true throes of it. But I think with that, that was Arcane Academia. So anyone that's interested in this game can find it on bossykid.itch.io. Uh, and this has been our session. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, this was Corey. You can find me on Twitter at, again, at Endless Musings or on co-host at Missy Nim. And playing with me was August. Hello, I've been August. You can still find me on Blue Sky at Harpy Dora and on Tumblr at Strange Harpy. And boy, howdy, I did not expect to have this much fun with Saul as a magic student. I uh, thought this was going to be a meme, but it turned out really great. So thank you all for doing this with me. Yeah, it was super fun. I'm glad that we were able to explore that space. And then we had Anya. I'm Anya, and I'm always happy for a chance to get back to my ghost girl and would love to visit this again. So, Ooh, yeah. I'm rubbing my hands together. Maybe we can do it again sometime. Just as a reminder, yeah. you can also find the podcast at FTLcast on Twitter and at FTLcast.com with a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash FTLcast. Cheers, everybody. It's been good. Shall we clap? Let's clap. It's August, and I just wanted to thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed us, please consider leaving a rating on your podcast platform of choice, telling your friends about us, or tweeting about us using the FTLcast hashtag. We are also part of a nonprofit podcasting guild called Standing Stones Productions. We do a variety of shows, including The Room Where It Happened and Dumb Kids Playing Hero, two actual play shows, and a Steven Universe discussion podcast called Gay Space Rocks. We also do live streams at twitch.tv slash standingstonesprod. You can keep up with everything that we do on Twitter at stones underscore standing. Unfortunately, Standing Stones was already taken. Your support means a lot. Thanks again!